Hello again. This is the service for Sunday the 30th of August, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. We're going to start by singing, Here is love vast as the ocean. Here is love vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the Prince of Life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise. He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured incessant from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love. The Collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and you give more than either we desire or deserve, Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 16 beginning at verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and rebuked him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. But what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Previously, in Matthew chapter 16, Simon, son of Jonah, the most forward and impulsive of Jesus' disciples, has covered himself in glory by correctly describing Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus has given him the nickname Peter, which means rock, and then, showing that the Son of God is partial to a pun, has told him, on this rock, I will build my church. Those of you who've already watched the whole series will know that Peter turns out to be far from a rock after Jesus has been arrested. And this isn't a spoiler. In the episode we've just had, Jesus predicts his own demise. We already know something is going to go badly wrong. But this is not what Peter expected or wanted to hear from the man he has just identified as God's chosen one. So he draws Jesus aside, a bit like those 
TV dramas where one character says to another, can I have a word? And you know there's going to be a major telling off. And he says, in effect, what are you saying? Have you completely lost it? You're a winner. You're going to triumph. Pull yourself together, man. And Jesus gives it back with interest. Get behind me, Satan. Peter, bless him, hasn't understood what Jesus is about. How could he? He hasn't seen the whole series. He's had a sniff of glory and now he expects everything to work out just fine. For if Jesus is, as he said, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, how can there be any other outcome than glorious triumph? A triumph in which he, Peter and the others will surely share. Only after the events of Easter, as we who've seen every episode know, will it be possible for them to grasp the true nature of the victory Jesus has won. In allowing himself to be crushed by his enemies, who represent human folly and self-interest, Jesus takes upon himself the sin and evil of the whole world and turns it into new life, fresh forgiveness, enduring hope. His mind is set on divine things, not on human things. And he calls us to be like him, not fixated on earthly success, but convinced that the way of self-giving love, which often feels like you're carrying a cross, leads to endless joy, to real glory. Like Peter, we need to have the whole story so that we can know the cost of following Jesus. Our lives will not be made easy by our faith, but also so that we will find a lasting peace and the fulfilment of our souls in the one who shows us that love is stronger than death. Amen. In our prayers, when I say Jesus, Lord of love, please respond with, change us to be more like you. Jesus, Lord of love, change us to be more like you. Lord of all, we come to you to ask your blessing on all who call themselves followers of Jesus, including us. Give your people grace to look beyond worldly success and easy satisfaction to the things of the Spirit and to help others be fruitful in love, joy and peace. Jesus, Lord of love, change us to be more like you. Lord of all, you have called us to be stewards of your creation. Forgive us our greed and wastefulness. Instill in us a deeper reverence for all your creatures. Fire us with determination to find sustainable ways of living and change the hearts of those in power away from profit and towards justice for all, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Jesus, Lord of love, change us to be more like you. Lord of all, you care for those who suffer. Pour out your healing grace upon the sick in body, mind or spirit. Be close to those who are anxious, lonely or depressed. And bless all who make it their business to care for those in need. Jesus, Lord of love, change us to be more like you. Lord of all, 
You give us confidence in life beyond death, your gift to us in Jesus Christ. Now bless all who mourn, especially the families of Deirdre Pillinger, Pat Turner and Barbara Benson, whom we remember now. Jesus, Lord of love, change us to be more like you. And now we join in the prayer that Jesus has given us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Second hymn, um, may be new to you, so I'm going to sing, well I'll sing the first verse, and of course, as you're watching this, you do have the opportunity to pause and rewind if you want to listen to any of the verses again to get the tune. It's an Iona song. Take this moment, sign and space. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around Here among us make the place Where your love is found Take the time to call my name Take the time to mend Who I am and what I've been all I fail to tend. Take the tiredness of my days, take my past regret, letting your forgiveness touch all I can't forget. Take the little child in me, Scared of growing old Help me here to find my worth Made in Christ's own mould Take my talents, take my skills Take what's yet to be Let my life be yours and yet let it still be me. And those last two lines for me sum up the wonder of what God is able to do in our lives. We give our lives to him and we find they're given back. We are still ourselves. We haven't been taken over and made into someone completely different. God is able to use us exactly as we are. We are still ourselves, and his spirit is in us. Blessing. The God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may overflow with hope, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon each one of you, and all those you love, this day and forever. Amen. Goodbye, go well.